mayoral candidate Brad Bradford speaking at Nathan Phillips Square. We're going to take that right now. Are great, but so is this city. Toronto has the people, the talent, the drive, and the resiliency to stop the decline that has our city at a breaking point. In six weeks, Torontonians will elect a new mayor on June 26th, and I'm offering my experience as an urban planner and a one-term city councillor as an alternative to the status quo created by yesterday's leaders. We need to cut through all the noise and distractions to build the future of the city that we want, a city where young families, new Canadians and seniors can afford to live and thrive. Now, throughout history, we've called on leaders to be there in our time of need. Your mayor needs to be there to lead this city. Now, here's a fact. Premier Ford lives in Toronto. He's a Torontonian and he has a vote, but just one vote. And I understand why Doug Ford wants a rubber stamp at City Hall, but that is not what our city needs. The people of Toronto are looking for a mayor who will work with Queen's Park, but also stand up to them to fight for Toronto's interests. The people of Toronto want less talk and more action to make life more affordable, to restore community safety, and to unlock the gridlock that has ground this city to a halt. Toronto does not need more status quo leadership by those who authored the problems that are facing the city today. The reality is, when Toronto needed a chief of police to help lead us through real challenges, Mark Saunders quit. A few short months after City Hall renewed his contract, he walked out the door. I don't like quitters. The city doesn't need more quitters. Last year, Mark Saunders decided he wanted to be a provincial politician, but he lost and the voters rejected him. So now he's trying to be Doug Ford's rubber stamp in the mayor's office. The next mayor of Toronto needs to be a city builder with experience in solving problems. Community safety, of course, is a top issue in this campaign. But a failed police chief who quit is not the answer. Mark Saunders' record shows that he couldn't get the job done. And his ideas in this campaign shows that he doesn't know how the city works. Mark Saunders' own frontline police officers voted 86% non-confidence in his job as the chief. We're talking about his own officers, the rank and file who work closely with him every single day. 86% of those officers felt that he couldn't get the job done. When a serial killer was terrorizing Toronto's gay community, rather than having accountability and responsibility, Mark Saunders blamed them for ringing the alarm on the very real threat to the community. That's not leadership. When Mark Saunders was Chief of Toronto Police, he practically stopped doing traffic enforcement, making our streets more dangerous. More people were seriously injured and more people were killed. If you think Mark Saunders is the answer to restoring common sense to City Hall, think again. We need less talk and more action to deliver real results for people. Toronto needs a leader who's going to stand up for this city and get the residents the respect that they deserve. The challenges that we're facing today demand that we move on from tired and out of gas leadership that has failed us time and time again. Mark Saunders' failed record as police chief and tendency to quit when the going gets tough is not worthy of a promotion to mayor. The mayor of Toronto needs to be a leader that stands up and fights for this city. The mayor of Toronto needs to be someone who's going to make it easier to build the housing and the affordable homes that this city needs. That's why my housing plan will increase supply, streamline approvals and reduce red tape. The mayor of Toronto needs to keep taxes low, not make life more unaffordable. That's why as mayor, I will not be raising your taxes and I will fight for affordability for young families, new Canadians and seniors, because that's what's important. The mayor of Toronto needs to command the respect of Queen's Park and Parliament Hill. Now, I have already secured a commitment from Premier Ford during this campaign to fund the creation of the bail compliance units across Toronto's 17 police divisions, working together to get things done. Toronto, as your mayor, I will bring the real leadership and practical solutions so that we can stop the decline and make sure that the basic services that you rely on are provided for. In this election, it is going to be crystal clear that we need strong, respected leadership that will oppose the high-tax NDP activist agenda. That's the leader that I will be. 
As your mayor, I will build an affordable city. I will make Toronto safer, and I will unclog the gridlock that has ground this city to a halt. As your mayor, I will lead the city through the affordable challenges, affordability challenges so many Torontonians are facing every day. And as an urban planner, with my experience on council, I will work for you to build the Toronto that we all know is possible. Toronto, with less talk and more action, we can do this together. With your vote on June 26, I will make it happen. Thanks very much for being here, and I'm happy to take your questions. Oh, I'm really excited for the debate tonight. Uh, I will be the candidate bringing practical solutions to today's problems. Um, we're going to have a lot of other candidates on the stage. But again, going back to my message of affordability, community safety, and unclogging the gridlock, that's what I hear about every day. And we'll be talking about that on tonight's debate stage. I live the job. You know, I'm out there every day hearing from Torontonians. They are giving me my marching orders, the priorities for them. Um, obviously, we're engaged in those conversations every day. My work here at City Council, uh, I'm very familiar with the files. And my experience as an urban planner working in the bureaucracy, I can tell you what works and what doesn't work. And that's why I'm running for office, to break down the divisional silos, to usher in more accountability to City Hall, and to make a difference in people's lives in a real, intangible way. I think it's so early. I mean, there are six weeks left in this campaign. If you look at Sutcliffe in Ottawa, if you look at Mayor Sims in Vancouver, heck, if you go back to 2003 and you look at David Miller, six weeks is a long time. We're going to see a lot of movement in the polls. We're going to continue to move upwards, and I think it's going to become crystal clear. We don't mo need more status quo failed leadership, and we also don't need an NDP activist agenda running City Hall. That would be terrible for affordability, it would be terrible for practical solutions, and it would make life more difficult for Torontonians. I present practical, real-world solutions to the issues of affordability, community safety, gridlock. That's what people want. That's why we're on the movement up. Well, for me, it's about what's important to Torontonians and what's important to this city. And as someone with a professional experience as an urban planner, someone who worked there, I can tell you what's broken and what doesn't work. I can tell you about the divisional silos. I can tell you about the pervasive attitude that whatever doesn't get done today will get done tomorrow. That doesn't deliver results for Torontonians. And when you look at the campaign field, you have Olivia Chow and her NDP activist agenda that will make life more expensive for Torontonians, that will jack your taxes through the roof and will be caught up in the echo chamber of Twitter rather than delivering real solutions. On the other side, you have Doug Ford's rubber stamp in, in Mark Saunders, and I think his track record of failed leadership in that position, I think someone who abandoned the post when the job got difficult. You know, back in 2020, um, 2021, when the city was facing a, a myriad of, of safety crisis, this guy walked out the door. So we don't need that in the city either. So practical, real-world solutions, someone who's got the experience, uh, the professional background, someone who's worked at City Hall but hasn't been there so long that I've been the author of the problems, that's what this city needs. Someone who's going to tackle affordability, community safety, and unlock the gridlock. Okay. Thanks very much for being here.